I was really proud of the players, though. I, I told them in the locker room afterwards, I think this was a big step forward and us getting this program where we need to get it. I thought they fought their tails off the whole game. Hey, welcome to another week of Inside the Vandals. I'm your host, Tom Purvis, joined now by Idaho head football coach, Paul Petrino. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Good to be on. Well, another uh, another interesting weather situation there on Saturday night. Yeah. Obviously, you guys get some of the first quarter, but then another delay. Did you think that this was deja vu? You weren't going to get be able to play football again? No, you knew you were going to play because they got turf. So there's no, you know, it wasn't a grass field, it was turf. So you knew you were going to play. It was just a matter of how long we were going to be waiting. But, uh, you know, again, I thought our guys did a good job. We came out of that break and, and tied the game back up, and, and I thought our guys did a good job. Now, you guys were this close to beating a very good team on the road, came up just short in the end. What did you tell your team after the game? You know, I told them that we've been talking all along, all fall camp, that we want to get to the fourth quarter and find a way to win in the fourth quarter, and, and they did a great job. I was probably the best game we've played since I've been here. Um, I was really proud of them, the way they fought. Now we just got to not kill ourselves. You know, the penalties, can't have the turnovers. That's, you know, you got to find a way to win. And one of the first things you got to do is not beat yourself. And, but I was really proud of them. I thought it was probably one of the best games we've played. It was the hardest we've played in a game. Definitely the best we've played on the road. And so now we just got to take that, come home and get our first home victory. Now take me back through that last, about 145 of that game. You guys get the ball with 145 to go. You kind of have them right where you want them. The offense stalls, they get the ball back, they go down, they score. What kind of happened in your mind in those last couple of minutes that kept you guys from getting the win? Yeah, well, actually, we got the ball. I think there was 2.23 left on the clock. Um, it was first and 10. The first play, we ran a crossing route, um, got a 13-yard gain, and they called us for holding. So that, that was really, that killed us. Otherwise, we would have had the ball and probably went down, the, you know, at least would have went into overtime at the worst, yeah. if not went down and scored. So we got a holding call. You know, it was a questionable, you know, they. You can call that on every play, but uh, yeah. so that was unfortunate. But you got to make up for it. That's where you got to you got to come back and make up for it. Yeah. Something we got to grow from, learn from, find a way to win. That's in the crucial situation. That's when guys got to step up and make plays and find a way to win. But there was two times in the game we were down by, you know, double digit, and we came back both times and tied it up. And uh, I thought our guys really fought hard, and and you know it was a good tough fight. Now we just got to find a way to win those games. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You mentioned those two times where you guys were down, down 21-7, you come back to tie, down 31-21, you come back to tie. How were you guys able to stay so resilient and come back both of those times? I think it's because we're, we're, we're mentally tougher as a team. You know, I think we're closer as a team. Guys are playing for each other. Guys are fighting for each other. And, and there was no, you know, they believed. They kept believing the whole time that we're going to be in that game. We're going to have a chance to win that game. I think offensively scoring 31 points against that team, was a really good game. You know, that, that they gave, the week before they played ACC team and, and held them under 100 yards, you know, and held them to five first downs. So, you know, I thought they played well. Um, just that last drive, you gotta go, you gotta go score, or you gotta keep the ball for sure, but you gotta go try to score. And um, defensively, we just killed ourselves, you know, a couple times, and that's something we eliminate that, and then we'll, have, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. Now, Coach, obviously a tough loss, but after the game, a lot of people talking about the difference that they've seen. After just one game, this team seems so much better than last year. Obviously, you've already talked about a couple of these things so far, but what differences do you see already after one game compared to last year? I think the biggest thing is just guys caring about each other. I think when, when you get where you all start playing for each other and you're all, you're all playing as a team and you're all fighting for each other, then you're a lot better than, you know, when everybody's just worried about themselves, then that, that's when it's easier to give up. So I just, we knew going into the game we were way better. You know, we just kind of had to go out and prove it to everybody. Yeah. And now we just got to keep doing that and then find a way. But th there's no doubt we're on the right track and our guys can see it and believe now that, you know, in years to come that we should dominate the Sun Belt. And uh, we're not there yet, but we're, we're awful close. We're, we're right around the corner. Now, well-known mantra in football, you make your biggest improvements between games one and two. What things specifically are you hoping to see improve this week? Well, one good thing is we're inside and we don't have to have a rain yeah. delay. So that, that'll, be, that'll nice. be nice. Because between game one and two, we, 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 got, we got that down, how to be in the locker room between the rain delays. <laughs> but now, down, I think the biggest thing is kind of what I talked about earlier. You know, we had 12 penalties. You cannot have that. So that's one thing that usually really improves from game one to two. You don't have those pre-snap penalties. You don't have, you know, um, some of the silly penalties. And then, then there was a couple that are, were questionable, but we, we can't have those. 
Um, number two, we got to take care of the football. I think that always improves between game one and two. And then just assignments. You know, there was a couple key assignment errors that we had on defense that, that really hurt us in the first half. And those, you know, their, their 21 points they scored in the first half could have easily been eliminated, you know, on just three or four plays if, if everybody does their job and believes in, I do my job and you do your job, and then, then the whole scheme works together. Talking about Matt Linehan, over 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, just his, his first college game. Did his yeah. performance surprise you? You know, I thought he was going to play real well, but I, I, it did. I'll have to, you know, it surprised me, especially that's a really good defense and a very complicated scheme. So for your first, your first college start to go against that scheme, and he just had a great, uh, great poise about him, a great leadership about him. Um, as the game went on, he didn't get rattled. He, nothing really phased him. So uh, that was great to see. You know, I think that's great things for the future. Going into this game, in your mind, was the plan to play both of them still, or, or was the plan to play him the whole time, or were you just kind of seeing as well as he was playing? No, we were going to play them both. We were going to play them both, but he was just playing too good. You know, he was playing too good, and he was, he was probably one of the best players on the field, and so that was just a case where, yeah. you know, that I just you got to do what's best for the team, and I felt that's what was best for the team. Going forward, at this point, is he the starter now? Is it still kind of a week-to-week -week thing? And do you expect at some point to name a starter? He's our guy for the rest of the season. Um, nobody's our guy for the rest of the season. Totally. You know, every single position, they compete every week in practice. So he's our starter right now, but they'll both get reps every week. They'll both continue to compete. Last year, we had to play three quarterbacks. So you always got to keep getting everybody better. But there's not a position on the field that somebody is the starter for the rest of the year. So they're, they're all going to compete every week, and they all got to practice hard and do a good job and practice every week, or, or anybody could have a ch the starter could change. Absolutely. Now, the O-line gave up four sacks. That's three less, though, than Monroe had the previous week. How do you assess the play of your O-line? I thought our O-line played well. I thought it was probably, to be honest with you, since I've been here, the best game our O-line's played. You know, that was a, that was a scheme that was very – very complex. Um, I thought they did a good job of picking up a lot of the different things they did. Um, you know, individually, I think a lot of them had their best games they've had, and as a unit, I thought they played well. And then, Coach, 9 of 18 on third downs, a 50% conversion rate. I looked back at the stats last year. That didn't happen last year. This is the best number you've had. How were you guys able to do that? Uh, it's just execution. You know, one, good quarterback play. Matt played really well. He moved up in the pocket, kept his eyes downfield hit people a few times, he ran and got one. Um, and really it should have been higher than that. We had three drops. So we were nine for 18 and could have easily been 12 for 18. So um, that, that's just something that we got to keep working on. Usually if you're 50% in third downs, you should win the game. You know, that's, it's all the situations of the games. That's how you win. And we won the third downs. We won 100% scoring in the critical zone. Now we just can't, uh, the, the drive that really hurt is we started on the minus one. We drove it all the way down you know, to their 46, and then, and then Josh fumbled. That was, that was a crucial time in the game, and that, that's what you can't do. That's just killing yourself. We, got, we can't turn the ball over, and, uh, you know, you can't have that key penalty on that last drive. We're going to take a quick break. When we're back, we'll talk about the Vandals' upcoming home opener here in the Dome. We'll talk about their opponent as well. Don't go away.